August has come and gone, but these are the stories that are impacting the future of Xbox. One of the things that I love to do is to take a look back through the lens of time and take a look at what Microsoft has announced for Xbox during a month to see how it's going to shape the impact that's going to happen on the future of Xbox, shape the impact, whatever. It's not a meteor coming in, it's a massaging of the brand and the features and functionalities coming to the platform that are going to have a long-term impact on how Xbox plays out during its life cycle of this generation of consoles. And this month, there was a lot to talk about, so let's just dive in. So, in no particular order, but we're going to start off on the negative side of the coin, is Halo Infinite. Now, we obviously know the date, which is not a negative thing. We have December 8th, the most most, probably most anticipated title I would think of this generation at least so far will be dropping I think Forza Horizon might be up there maybe Starfield somewhere but I think Halo Infinite uh, is definitely probably the most popular title coming and it's coming December 8th but as we know there's gonna be no co-op and no forge at launch now they are gonna arrive later but I think at this point in the hype cycle we haven't seen the campaign really in any meaningful way and I think that's a little concerning and I think people are a little nervous that Microsoft or I should that 343 has not shown it off although they've been sort of massaging the waters and saying like hey we're just working on it crafting the narrative and, and how we're going to reveal it and all that stuff uh, but I think at this point the fact that we don't really have a good baseline on what is going to be happening is a little concerning and the fact that the consoles uh, the Halo Infinite consoles aren't going to launch at the same time as the game but bada bing bada boom whatever that's just how it's going to be anyways so that is coming December 8th and which is pretty much the last possible weekend or, or date I should say right before the holiday shopping season starts to come to a close and so there you go December 8th they are pushing it right up to the deadline hopefully it better be good because at this point it'll be delayed over a year from when it was initially supposed to launch now other things that are happening not so impactful but they're a little bit softer on the eyeballs or I should say sharper is the Xbox dashboard is now has a, a quote-unquote higher res update now Microsoft was a little coy about the actual resolution it doesn't seem like it's actually 4k res running on a 4k display they kept saying high res displays or up a resolution I should say and so whatever it is it's better than what we had before uh, I would just be nice if they came out and said hey it's truly 4k that's that would be nice but for some reason they're not and I'm not exactly sure why but for people who were concerned that this wasn't happening because of storage and games and stuff like that uh, Microsoft very clearly stated that this has no impact on available capacity or resources for games when they're running so just don't that that's a non-issue uh, at this time now the other interesting thing that we are now seeing or at least that was announced this month is we're starting to get our first taste of the first Xbox hardware that has been customized. Now, I, I hesitate there for a second because technically we've seen some like one-offs and things that you could win. There's a Far Cry 6 one uh, console that you can win, but the first limited edition Xbox Series X that you can actually get in your dirty paws, although if you haven't pre-ordered it, you're probably not getting it at this point, is going to be coming. So this is Microsoft starting to play in the waters of customizing consoles. Now, we didn't have not yet seen a limited edition or customized Xbox Series S, which of the two, honestly, I think is the better looking console. Uh, just, I just think that the Series S looks nice. That's, you know, no haters here. Um, but I think from a customization standpoint, the Series X is just like a box, like a blank tall box that gives it a lot of flexibility for doing unique things. So we will see that. We're also seeing the first, I believe the first, or one of the few limited edition uh, Elite Series 2 controllers, at least for this generation. I can't remember if there was a Gears of War one in there at some point, but there's definitely going to be a Halo Infinite themed uh, Xbox Series 2 Elite controller, which is one side of the coin is like, hey, that makes me kind of happy because like, hey, you've got options, you've got customizations, and it's also the charging, I think, a little premium for that as well. But on a on the other side, it also means that they're not updating it. We're not getting a Series 3 controller because there's no share button on the Elite Series 2. And the Series 2 doesn't even have the does not have yet have the dynamic latency input update. DLI, I think is what they refer to it as. Has not made its way to that controller, although Microsoft says that it will be coming and to all previous generation controllers as well. So kind of neat that Microsoft is starting to uh, you know play with the waters of limited edition and customized consoles. I suspect that this will be happening a lot. We saw it a ton with last generation. There was a purple Fortnite one. There were the Gears of War ones. There was tons of them. And I fully expect Microsoft to continue that that 
theme, I guess, if you will, of customizing consoles going forward. That being said, getting consoles is still relatively difficult, so it's not going to be happening too crazily right now just because people would rather just have a vanilla console than rather than a, a themed one because they're, one, typically more expensive, and two, they, you're just still hard to get them. Um, but if you were able to grab that Halo Infinite Limited Edition console, I suspect that will be a collector's item for the long term because just, one, it's hard to get a console as it is right now, and two, it's limited edition and it's customized and it's the first of the series. X, so it's a pretty neat thing. Speaking of the hardware side, Microsoft has continued to drive the nail of value into the Xbox brand, and they're doing it, in my opinion, once again with the hardwired headset that is coming. So Microsoft announced the Xbox wired headset, which is a lot like the wireless headset, but it's got a very green Xbox cord attached to it. And so that'll be 60 bucks, and that'll be coming actually this month, but they announced it in August on September 25th. First. So be on the lookout for that if you're looking for a new headset to, I don't know, refresh your gaming experience. Well, I have not used that one yet. Nobody has used it yet. If it's much like the wireless headset, the sound profile isn't my favorite, but it has loads of features. And I think at $60, this wire, the wired headset, if I say it correctly, is going to be a tremendous value and honestly a pretty big seller. It has all the features and functionality. And yes, you can customize it using the tuner uh, or the, the EQ settings in the OS of Xbox, which again, gives it just tons Tons of flexibility. It's just a little muddied for my sound, for my my preference. That again, I'm coming from a much more expensive headset and stepping down to something like that. So that's expected. But if you're using TV speakers, this will be a tremendous step forward and you will be absolutely probably over the moon as long as it has all the same features and functionality and works just as well as the wireless headset. That wired headset, I, I really think is going to be a strong seller uh, this holiday shopping season. Now, as I noted, Microsoft continues to drive that nail of value into the Xbox brand. Microsoft is doing it once again, and this is by far the biggest story, at least to me personally. Uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming coming to Xbox One, which will include current gen titles, meaning on your last generation Xbox, you'll be able to play current gen titles through cloud gaming. This is excellent value for the end user. If you have an Xbox One and you want to try out the new games, yes, we all know that cloud gaming isn't the perfect experience, but it's pretty darn good, especially at Psychonauts 2, honestly, should probably pre play pretty well. I have not played it through cloud gaming, so I can't officially confirm that I'm playing it on uh, my console through right now. I would imagine that type of a title will play pretty well on cloud gaming, and the fact that it's coming to last gen consoles once again increases the value of the Xbox brand. You're getting more value out of your Xbox One hardware and honestly it should help bump up those resale values for that old console because now it has new life and a longer shelf life at the end of the day. So that is once again Microsoft driving more value through that and plus there's just so many other benefits of bringing cloud gaming to the Xbox both last gen and current gen. For example Sea of Thieves let's say your friends are playing it and you don't have it installed but you're subscribed to Xbox Game Pass you can jump in instantly with your friends and start playing that title through cloud gaming while it downloads either in the background or when you go to sleep at night you'll wake up the next day and it will be there if you choose to do that but the fact that you can jump into a game instantly is going to be a huge value add for microsoft and a unique feature for example if you have game demos in the store and you want to try one out or you want to try out a game pass title without downloading it you can just play it through cloud gaming get a feel for what it's like rather than having to a either clear up storage space on your device or you just don't want to wait not everybody has a fast connection if you only have 10 down or 20 down you know godspeed um everything else you can try it out without having to fully commit to downloading the 20 30 or if it's call of duty 7 trillion gigs um to fill up all your storage so it's a really big value play and it has me really excited now this will not unfortunately be coming until later this year sometime again before the holiday shopping season which means i hope that halo infinite is in there that would be a pretty interesting launch uh we see microsoft launching most titles these days sort of on the triple threat platform if you will you have the digital Digital, you have the physical and then you have the streaming capability um, through cloud gaming and so Microsoft likes to launch it on all these platforms so that you can just start playing the game any way and anyhow that you would like without having to pay for any sort of upgrade right and it doesn't matter if you move generations hopefully everybody caught that dig uh, but Microsoft continues to again drive that value home and I think this was another month of showing that and so there's a lot of big stuff that has happened during the past month well it started off a little bit slow Gamescom brought a ton of news and we've got Microsoft gearing up for the holiday shopping season we're starting to see some of their plays here we're starting to see Microsoft lining up the month the last three months of the year basically uh, to to have highlights 
coming to the Xbox brand, including big title launches like Halo Infinite, big feature launches like cloud gaming arriving. And then we also have the custom hardware also arriving at various touch points throughout the, the holiday shopping season to keep Xbox at the top of the marketing list and getting a lot of effort and momentum behind it. Remember, they're going to be trying to pushing everybody, I would suspect, this, you know, this holiday shopping season toward cloud gaming, or the, I should say Xbox Game Pass. So that is one thing we have yet to see yet are these Game Pass value bundles or potential sales on Xbox Game Pass. We don't quite know what Microsoft is going to do there yet, but that is something I'm hoping that Microsoft might start talking about in September as they lay out their full plan for getting people to jump into the Xbox family during the holiday shopping season, because this will be a pivotal one, assuming that consoles are on the shelves. And if not, then Microsoft will push Game Pass even harder. So there you go, guys. That wraps up what was big in the month of August. A little look ahead, what I'm hoping to see for the holiday shopping season. And as always, if you want to keep updated on every Everything in the Xbox world, make sure to keep it subscribed here because the only BS on this channel is me.